In just a few months, Apple is going to release its new streaming service, Apple TV+. Plus. So as part of my ongoing How to Pitch series, today I'm going to explain what I think they're looking for in terms of original animated ideas. But if you're looking for the executive summary, it goes something like this. The A in the Apple is probably going to be A-lister. The app itself is probably going to look a lot like the Apple Store. And the real question on everyone's mind is can you cook? Stay tuned for the details. Hey there, and welcome back to Surviving Animation, your guide to making it in the business of cartoons. My name is Eric Calderon. First of all, let me apologize. It's been a little bit of time since I've been able to post some content on this channel, but I've got a really good reason for that. As some of you may know, I am currently head of studio for a company called Octopi, and we are currently in production on an animated series based on the card game Magic the Gathering for Netflix. So this series is done in collaboration with the Avengers directors, Joe and Anthony Russo. So it is an exciting time. It's a really busy time. And because of that, I have not had time to put uh, some new uh, material up on this channel. But I am back and I'm here to talk to you about Apple TV Plus. So let's dive right in. Apple TV Plus. Okay, before we get into the details about Apple TV+, Plus, let me just say, if this is your first time to Surviving Animation, please like and subscribe. My purpose here is purely to give out business information about cartoons to anyone interested in watching. It's for the new, it's for the veteran, it's for anyone who's just curious on keeping up with the industry. I've been in the business for about 25 years and I hope I can share some of what I've learned along the way to anyone out there watching. Okay, so let's get right back to Apple TV+. Plus. Um, as some of you may saw a few months ago, Apple made a big fanfare presentation where they showed a little preview of some of the series that they're going to be launching on their service. Which brings me to the first point about Apple TV+, Plus, which is the A is for A-lister. So, what does A-lister mean? Well, it's pretty easy to understand because basically an A-lister is someone of such massive celebrity status or such massive brand value that they're basically a household name. So let me list off some of the people Apple actually announced in their opening presentation for their service. So we're talking about J.J. Abrams, Steven Spielberg, uh, M. Night Shyamalan, uh, Ronald Moore, Jason Momoa, uh, Stephen Carell, uh, Reese Witherspoon, and of course, Oprah and Prince Harry. So these are some of the biggest, most important names in all of Hollywood. And that tells me, and I think that should tell you, that if you're gonna do a series with Apple, there's a pretty simple first question they're gonna ask, and that is, are you an A-lister? And thanks to the visionary and inventive folks here at Apple, my Amblin team and I are going to be resurrecting this 93-year-old brand and offering to multi-generational audiences a whole new batch of amazing stories. The next point I'd like to make about the Apple TV service is I believe that the app itself is gonna look a lot like the Apple Store. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you go into any Apple Store, as I'm sure we all have, at the center of the actual store itself, there are all these tables, and those tables are focused on the most important products that they're pushing at the moment. So that is, almost all the time, uh, the latest Apple laptop, the Apple phones, uh, the, um, the iWatches, and the iPad. So that's the center focus of all their marketing. That's their bread and butter. That's really what they want you to buy when you go into one of these Apple stores. Now, what is on the walls? On the walls are all the accessories, all the third-party items, all the uh, smaller stuff that you need to support the items in the center, but they're not marketed to. They're just there that if you know you happen to buy an Apple laptop, you walk over to the side and there's gonna be an Apple case. So I believe the way that they're marketing the service when they showed all these A-listers with all these major properties, they're gonna be focusing on specific batches of shows per season. So instead of being like Netflix or, or maybe in the tech world like Walmart or Best Buy, I don't believe you're gonna come into the Apple service with a huge amount of choices and an unlimited search of, of what you wanna watch. Rather, I think they're gonna focus everything on their fully owned and operated TV shows, the one that they paid 100% for, and kind of market you the top seven or eight at a time. Now, if you're into that, you know, let's say you uh, watch uh, you know, Amazing Stories by Steven Spielberg, which is being rebooted for Apple. Probably now that you've watched that, they're gonna say, okay, this viewer is now into family content, uh, probably interested in some you know, high quality, family friendly thing. So then they're gonna accessorize and move you into the uh, smaller shows that maybe they don't fully own, but are within that genre. But again, 
I think the focus is always going to be on their major shows, and I think that's why it's going to look a lot like the Apple Store. So what does that all mean to us, the kind of quote-unquote average animation person in the industry, either a producer, a director, or a showrunner who wants to present something to Apple TV Plus services? Well, if it is going to be like I think, which is like the Apple Store, then the bad news is it's probably not a great time to come to them with something that is going to be a B-lister or below. So uh, specifically, that might mean uh, no to something like a general co-production, which involves a bunch of countries financing a full series. Uh, probably no to someone who is, you know, kind of a strong but not top, top level creator. And uh, probably no to uh, any kind of franchise that is not massive uh, in terms of millions and millions of units sold uh, across its whole uh, intellectual property footprint. So I know that's not great news to hear, but I think it's realistic to assume that maybe in the first year or even the second year, uh, Apple is not going to be into uh, you know the kind of smaller-ish shows. It it's going to want the biggest, biggest, big ones. And then if you're lucky, you might be accessorized after that. Uh, probably through an acquisition that's paid for by someone else. So I hope uh, that's not terrible news, but I think it's the kind of news I think is realistic for that idea. Now, because there's just not much information out there for Apple, uh, there's really only one more point I want to make about the Apple TV Plus service, and that is this idea of uh, you have to know how to cook. Now, I said that in the beginning, and uh, if you didn't catch on by now, what I specifically meant by that is Tim Cook. So. Um, although no one really knows definitively, uh, there is kind of a, a rumor or an idea that uh, Tim Cook himself is actually looking at a lot of the content coming in through the service. So uh, the idea of learn how to cook is no one really knows uh, what kind of content president he's going to be. No one really knows uh, what his opinions are going to be creatively uh, as a guy who came from technology, as a guy who came from product, suddenly doing entertainment. You know, he could be a guy who says, hey, whatever my super expert team in Los Angeles decides to do, I'm going to trust and go with them. Or is he going to say, hey, listen, I have these very personal opinions about some of this content. Uh, I'm going to put my fingerprint on and, and say which is good and which is not and maybe personally do things like green lights or actually cancel shows if he just doesn't personally like it. Or uh, probably more reliably, and I think I'm taking this from the metaphor of actual technology, I think uh, you know the idea of Apple has always been uh, the sum of reliable parts, and I know that uh, talking about you know Apple versus Android or Windows or PC can, can become like a religious argument. But I think Apple's uh, general attitude towards technology is that you know let's take all these parts that have been proven in the marketplace, these ideas that other companies may be have tried, uh, but now we'll master it. Um, that's I feel like how they're taking uh, the uh, the same idea into content. So. Hence, you get the Oprahs and the Spielbergs and the Jason Momoas, all these big proven properties, and you're putting them with proven writers, and you're having kind of a very, uh, let's call it a high risk, high reward kind of idea. Now, you know, this is not the Netflix approach. This is not the, you know, uh, TV animation approach, which might use a newcomer or a, a new kind of talent that, you know, we, us in the industry can kind of have an intuition for. This seems like a very, like, numbers based and that kind of reliable talent type of idea. So uh, I guess that's my final thing to say is uh, the cook factor or how to cook is really uh, the big question mark in everyone's mind and will very much determine uh, what kind of cartoons are gonna be on Apple over the next few years. All right, that's all I've got to say for Apple TV Plus. Thanks for hanging with me and thanks for your patience and waiting for this video to come because I know it's been a long time since I posted. So anyway, Stay tuned for the next one and thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.